GDP. It's something you hear about all the time, but what does it actually mean, and why is it so important? Let's start with the basics. GDP stands for Gross Domestic Product, and it measures the total value of all goods and services produced within a country during a specific time period. So every car produced, every haircut given, and every smartphone sold all adds towards GDP. Think of it as the economic report card for a country. But how do we actually calculate this number? There are three main ways to calculate GDP. The production approach, the income approach, and the expenditure approach. Let's break each one down. The production approach adds up the value of all goods and services produced in the economy. Imagine we're adding the value of everything made, from shoes to software, and then minus the costs of materials and services used to produce them. Next is the income approach. This method looks at the income earned by everyone in the country, wages from jobs, profits from businesses, and rent from property. It basically tracks how much money is flowing into people's pockets. And finally, we have the expenditure approach, which is the most common method. This method adds up all the money spent in the economy. That's consumer spending, business investments, government spending, and the difference between exports and imports. So in this approach, GDP is essentially the sum of all this spending. Okay, now we know what GDP is and how it's calculated, but why should we care? GDP is a key indicator of a country's economic health. When GDP is growing, it usually means more jobs, higher incomes, and better living standards. In contrast, when GDP shrinks, it could signal a recession, higher unemployment, and worse living standards. But wait, GDP isn't perfect because it fails to include other factors. For example, GDP doesn't account for environmental damage or income inequality. Some countries have high GDPs, but that doesn't necessarily mean that people are thriving in all aspects of life. So while GDP is useful, it's important to look at other factors when assessing a country's overall health. One last thing, there's a difference between nominal and real GDP. When we talk about GDP without adjusting for inflation, that's nominal GDP. But when we want to compare GDP across different years, we use real GDP which adjusts for inflation so we get a more accurate picture of economic growth. So GDP is a powerful tool to understand how an economy is doing, but it provides an incomplete picture. These are the top 15 countries by GDP in 2024. But ask yourself, does this make them the best 15 countries in the world? And that too, in this very order? It is also estimated that AI will increase global GDP by $16 trillion. So the gap between these countries may increase over the coming years, or this list may even completely change over the next 50 years.